What's up everybody, it's Mike here and welcome to my review of the GDQ2. Is this another 3D printer on the market that's just kind of a dud or is it an actual potential contender for the best beginner 3D printer? Well, let's go ahead and get right into it. So one quick thing to note guys, Chidi actually did go ahead and send this over to me for review. There has been no compensation exchanged other than the fact that they actually sent me the, the 3D printer, right? That's compensation. They did send me the 3D printer for free, just in exchange for my honest feedback. With that being said, I am under no obligation to send them the video first and all thoughts are my own on this video. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So as far as unboxing and setup of the GDQ2, I'm not gonna go into that because I think everyone should unbox and experience their 3D printer themselves. But let's go ahead and go over some of the most important specs that I find most people are concerned with. So the first one is going to be the build plate size. We're looking at 270 by 270 by 256 millimeter cubed as compared to something like the Bamboo Lab A1, the P1P, the P1S. Those are all probably 3D printers you're looking at in this price range. Those are at 256 millimeter cubed. When I was actually using this 3D printer, I really didn't find myself using that extra space most of the time, all modelers are making stuff to fit on Bamboo Lab 3D printers. While that space, that extra space is nice to have, it's really not too important. It's only 14 millimeters in two ways. It's not gonna add too much. So if that's in your decision factoring, I would probably minimize that, but you know, to each their own. But when it comes to engineering filaments, it does have an active chamber heater. And on top of that, the nozzle goes up to 370 degrees Celsius. So if you're looking at printing some of those engineering filaments, you can do that on the GDQ2. So I think when it comes to the GDQ2 and spec to price ratio, I think it's one of the best on the market. It is coming in at $499 currently. I don't really see it going on sale too much. Maybe you'll get $50 off here or there because that was the pre-order price, but who knows? Also on top of that, when it comes to multicolor printing, the GD box, you can get the combo, which will cost you $650 but the GD box is shipping separately later down the road. I personally did not have the GD box and that's not going to be in this review, but I may have one later and we'll do a separate review on that. Other things to note, they kind of advertise it as being able to print on any sort of material. So even if you put a tile on the build plate, it says it's going to be able to print with it. Kind of silly, but I mean, maybe someone has a use for that. Other things to note is it does say it also has filtration inside the 3D printer, pretty much like every single 3D printer on the market. One thing to note though, guys, I wouldn't trust any 3D printer on the market to filter out all of the VOCs when it comes to 3D printing. I just wouldn't trust it, especially if you're printing with ABS, ASA, um, carbon fiber materials, nylons, I, I would get some sort of other filtration or at least try to vent that out into the outdoors. Getting into some of the 3D prints, this is actually a part for one of the projects I'm working on. Secretive, not really, but you can see here, we had quite a few layer shifts when it comes to the GDQ2. I do think it's because the internal has a tendency to run really hot. Of course, I took a lid off all of that. I just don't know any other explanation as far as what's going on. Maybe I could have slowed it down, but you can see it's kind of a similar issue that I had on my Cobra S1 where it just wasn't producing consistent nice layers. But again, maybe I could have slowed it down and got better results. Kind of the same issue here if I can get it on camera, but this part was one that I just said, you know what, let's see how many different filament changes we can do on one 3D print. Here, this one is extremely clean. I'm extremely happy with it. These are all manual filament changes. Again, I don't have the cheaty box, so I have to swap them all out myself. But in here, you can see where it was a swap and you can feel it, it is a slight layer shift. On the top though, it is another clean 3D swap, like our filament swap. The last PLA print here, it looks pretty good. It is a 0.12 layer height war machine mask or faceplate that I want to do. I wanna get some more Iron Man helmets in there, you know, if War Machine counts as Iron Man, I count it. But here it is, this is the Punisher War Machine helmet from DO3D, I'll leave a link down below. Uh, at point one two layer height, you would expect maybe some better results, but it's pretty consistent, again, as far as like just the other point two layer heights. Um, yeah, take it as you will, this is this one. And now we'll get into my Pet G face mask that I did for an Iron Man Mark II. Now, this is what I think was the best 3D print I had off this 3D printer. It is a rapid PLA from Elegoo at 0.2 layer height. 
and my goodness, this thing was just beautiful. I think the results were amazing. There is some scarring, which I feel like is to be expected right there from the supports and pet G. The only minor blemish was this right here. I'm not really sure what happened, but as far as like the actual face mask itself, if you're going to be printing some pet G on the GDQ2, this is what you print. This, I mean, or what you use on the GD. Any higher temp materials, I think are going to print fantastic on this 3D printer. Are you in the market for some 3D printer tools? Well, go ahead and check out Fantic. They are running some Prime Day deals on Amazon right now, so go ahead and check them out in the link below. We do have the electric screwdriver and the electric rotary tool that we're gonna go ahead and take a real quick closer look. So they did send me their rotary tool and I've used it for about 30 days and so far it's been fantastic. It just pops out here, very easy to use. So taking a closer look, you can see all of the different attachments this thing comes with. It does charge via USB-C, so it's really easy to use and compact. You just go ahead and put it back in here, slides in there, and boom, voila, we are all good to go. So again, I've been using the rotary tool pretty heavily for the last 30 days with no issues. So let's go ahead and check out the screwdriver. So here is the screwdriver, same thing. It goes ahead and you hit this, it pops out, boom, like that. Then you got this little hole here. You go ahead and pull it out, boom, and you have all of these different attachments. Now keep in mind, this is not a full size Phillips head screwdriver. It's more of a smaller compact screwdriver for those electronic uses. But again, guys, if you're interested, they are having some deals right now, so go ahead and check them out in the links below and back to our regular scheduled program. When it comes to printing results, I probably could have got them a little bit better by slowing down the printer, opening the door, because I had a tendency just to put leave the lid on. So I could have probably opened the door, let some more cool air in there, probably would have got a lot cleaner finishes on some of those PLA results. So I think if you bought this 3D printer, I think you'll have a lot better results than I did when it comes to PLA, because I'm lazy. I just like to leave stock settings in there. I think if I would have slowed it down, did uh, you know open the door, I think the PLA results would have been a lot better. Where this printer really shined for me was the Pet G, and I'm gonna continue to push out Pet G prints on this thing, print some helmets, things like that. You know, that extra build volume gives you a little bit more room to add a few more pieces. On top of this, as far as cons that I'll talk about real quick, didn't really have too many. I think out of the factory, there's a little too much grease on the rails, which got to the build plate, which I didn't realize. So my first few prints weren't sticking to the build plate. After I cleaned off the build plate, I had no issues. Um, on top of this, the other issue I had was a few times, I couldn't get the Q2 to connect to the internet. So I had to go out to the printer, I hit the restart firmware, restart clipper a few times, and then eventually it just connected back. Um, there was one time also I think it froze, that was about it. Outside of that, um, there was only one other weird issue where all of a sudden I went out there and it said the temperature of the nozzle was like 999, but it was actually cool, so I think that's where I hit restart clipper and everything has worked since. And that happened around like hour 20. Nothing else like that has happened. I think it was just like a glitch. Maybe I was on an earlier firmware or something like that. Again, it, the temperature or the, the nozzle wasn't hot. It was probably at zero, honestly, or whatever zero can be. And it was just kind of frozen. So once I restarted the printer, everything seemed to work good. But outside of those few like little glitches, the printer has been fantastic. It does. Probably, it's probably going to sit in my lineup currently. I have four printers running pretty much constantly. The H2S, the Bambi Lab A1, the P1S, you guys can tell I'm a bamboo guy. But as far as that, the Q2 is also in that lineup. For any of those higher heat materials like the PET-G, I'm gonna continue to print some Iron Man stuff on that printer. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the printer. I think if you guys are looking to purchase one, I think it delivers a lot for the $4.99 price tag. It just depends what you're looking for. Do you need just PLA? Well, there are other cheaper options, but do you want something that can print the PET G's, um, the ABS, the ASA, you need active chamber heating? Like there's a lot that this printer offers for $499 that you're not going to get in another printer that's like 800 plus dollars. I can't even really think of one off the top of my head that has all of these features, even close to the Q2 at 499. And I think that's where it kind of stands out. It also has an ethernet port. So if you want to run it land-based, you can do that. There's a lot that, again, there's a lot that it offers that a lot of other printers aren't even doing. Cause I don't even know another one of my printers that has an ethernet port. 
So if that's something you're also looking for, what other options can you really go with? I know in this price range, you know, as far as like the 300, I would say up to $600. The P1S is at 550 if it's standalone. So for 50 more dollars, do you get the P1S? I think you can you can make the argument that you get the Q2 even over the P1S. You know, the P1S is three years old. You don't have active chamber, active chamber heating. You don't have a hardened steel nozzle right out of the box, things like that. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Of course, I'm sure I'm forgetting to talk about a few things. So if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. But to wrap this all up, it's impossible for me to remember everything when it comes to this 3D printer. I need to start taking some notes and just keep a notepad anytime I get a new 3D printer. So that way I can just put it all into one video and like, you know, do bullet points and all that. But if you guys have any questions, I'll be sure to answer them in the comments down below. I appreciate Chidi for sending this out for review again. They didn't have any requirements of me other than they asked to make a video. I didn't sign anything, no payment exchange, other than them sending me the 3D printer, which I greatly appreciate. But outside of that, guys, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time for the next review and 3D printer news, guys, every Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.